This is Trademark G of the Evolution Control Committee encouraging all of you to evolve to your best with LabRats.TV. <music>
If you're a mobile user, Steve Jobs' one more thing this time at the Macworld conference will be of immense benefit to you. It's the new MacBook Pro, and it'll be replacing the PowerBook series. Now, what the big feature is here is that it's actually integrated the Intel dual-core processing in it which means a speed of about four to five times faster than before. Now, it, uh, the problem with the G4 is trying to get it up to that speed, it would just run way too hot, and there's no way that you could get a G5 into one of those cases. The other neat thing about this is it also has an eyesight built right into the top edge of the, uh, the screen, which is amazing. So you can do video conferencing on the go as well. And one of the neat innovative features on this is something called the Maglock, which is a way of attaching the power cable. And Mr. Andy Walker is going to swoop right in and show you. Now, what happens is if you're holding your uh, notebook uh, on a desktop and someone walks past and trips over your cable, there's a very good chance that your notebook will go flying, which is no good for anybody. Uh, what this does is if you pull on it, a little yank will just bring it right out and the magnetic cable holds it in place when you are using it. So what that means is no more flying notebooks, no more damage, faster speed, fantastic for everybody. Well, I'm here on the uh, Mac uh, world floor with the intimidable David Pogue. How are you, David? Very well, thank you. David, of course, is the, uh, what, what are you these days, the reporter for the New York Times? Uh, uh, what's your title? Uh, I'm the technology columnist for the Times, yep. Well, there you go. Uh, tell us a little bit about this announcement today by Mr. Uh, Mr. Jobs. What is significant about the fact that now Intel is inside an Apple? Well, I think there's a couple things going on. Um, for the consumer, it just means faster, lower power, thinner laptops, and and um, but there but there's the side effects of this I think are even more interesting. One is I'm told by people inside both companies that Intel bent over backwards to work with Apple. I mean they really worked hard to pull this off six months ahead of schedule and well. And Apple is not used to getting that kind of attention from their chip suppliers, as we know. That's one of the reasons they dumped IBM, is that IBM was basically ignoring them. So it must feel great to have, you know, to be an Apple guy, having them really work closely with you. And secondly, um, remember that in theory, uh, this machine, these machines will run Windows. And uh, I just met with Steve Jobs and asked him point blank, so Apple's doing nothing to stop you from running Windows, right? And he said, nope, you're free to run Windows. So, uh, basically, people are going to be able to buy two machines in one uh, with the beautiful looks of a Mac. So I think that could be significant. Do, does this mean a different uh, relationship between uh, Microsoft, uh, Apple, and uh, Intel now? It could. Um, Steve Jobs told me that he, in fact, offered Bill Gates, uh, would you like us to sell Windows for 99 bucks or whatever? And uh, it didn't indicate what the response was, but I thought that was interesting. So could be a win-win a for everyone. And Microsoft, do you think they're trembling in their shoes now in, uh, in Redmond, or what do you think they're thinking? <laughs> Get real. They, they have nothing to worry about. Not at all, because I would have thought that now, now there's, there's no barrier to entry on, on the Mac, now that it's got as much power as, say, uh, an equivalently priced Dell. It was never about power. It's, you know what it's about? It's about corporate buyers. Those 95% market share numbers, that's about corporations buying 500 or 1,000 computers at a time. That's where those numbers come from. If you were to break down the statistics of how many individuals make individual buying decisions, Mac versus PC, I think you would be surprised. The numbers would be skewed way off. And the corporate buyers will still buy Microsoft Windows PCs. Um, you know, the saying is no one ever got fired for buying Microsoft, and that will continue. So bottom line here, this decision today, or this, or this announcement today is going to do what, do you think, in the marketplace? Um, I think it could help. Apple scraped together another couple points of market share, and when you've only got 4%, a couple points of market share is a big deal. Thanks so much, David. So I'm here with Leo Laporte, a bit of a change. I've got the mic, and, <laughs> and I'm interviewing you. So Leo, we're, we're here at Macworld. Uh, tell me, what were your thoughts about the, uh, the show so far? What, what, what really impressed you? It was all I could do not to the minute Steve said, you know, here's the new iMac and here's the price and here's how fast it is, literally jump out of the seat and run over to the Apple store. But then I found out that I wouldn't get it right away. And then I saw the PowerBook, or I'm sorry, the MacBook Duo Core, or whatever it's called, MacBook Core. MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro. I, I don't it know. It's a terrible name. name. But uh, then I saw that and said, no, that's what I want. And then he said, uh, but it's not available to February. So I think what I'm going to do is go home and order mm -hmm. that. I'll tell you, I mean, having 
what I really did after the keynote was run down to the demo and play with them, and it, they're impressively faster. I mean, this is the kind of performance PC users have had for a long time, but to have it on Macintosh really is exciting. I mean, it's really great. Do you think it's a good idea to run out and get the first generation of this No, product? it's a terrible idea, but it's exactly the kind of stupid thing I might do. You're willing to take the bullet for us? Yeah, somebody's got to do it. Uh, in fact, uh, on uh, the podcast tonight, uh, we learned, in fact, that although Apple hasn't said anything about it, there are a lot of Mac applications, some of them from Apple, that won't run on the new PowerBook. Right, and this may be why they didn't bring out the Mac Mini right away, because you know it won't run a lot of the application there, that consumers will want to there use. There may be some issues. Well, maybe. I think maybe that's why they didn't bring out the Pro line. The, uh, Everything that comes with OS X is now native Intel. That means Safari, that means Mail, uh, that means all of the iLife applications. What doesn't run, apparently, on them is uh, some of the higher end things like Final Cut, although yeah. that's supposed to be done by... Which, which we're using to cut this, so yeah. that's a big problem that's for a us. Big, you can't run out and get a new one, even though it would be a lot faster. Now in March, they'll have the upgrade and it'll be $49, which is a good deal. Uh, you can't run a lot of the pro apps. Photoshop does work and Office works, but apparently it's not it's non-trivial to get them working reliably and performing well. Uh, it takes a lot of tweaking. So I think that uh, that's something important for people to understand. If there's Macintosh applications they rely on, they won't automatically work on the new Intel. And Apple's downplaying that. Mm -hmm. So they said they're going to transition the entire line in, by the end of 2006. That's why it's going to take so long. Right. I'm sure they could give you the hardware now. Mm -hmm. It's the software that's the trouble. Right. So, so what do you think the next uh, thing out of the shoot's going to be? Will it be the, uh, the Mac Mini? I think you'll Mini? see a Mini. Yeah, I think they're going to do the consumer products first. The Mini doesn't have, you know, isn't used with Final Cut Pro. Well, you might, but I mean, most people don't use it with Final Cut Pro. It's used with a traditional Apple application. So I, I, think, the Mini, I think they could have done a Mini today. Mm -hmm. I think they just didn't want to overwhelm the channel. Uh, you know, I guess it, Andy just asked if you could use it with a seller on I mean, I guess you could. I, um, I think, frankly, Apple is smart to go with the latest, greatest Intel chips, with, uh, chips that many PCs aren't yet running, these new dual core, the Yona-based dual cores, mm -hmm. which are really good chips. Mm -hmm. uh, you're getting incredible performance and, and low power usage. They had to in the PowerBook, even with that low power mm -hmm. chip, it's very hot. I mean, Intel's t touting these for their uh, mobile things now with the it's Centrino a, deal as well. It's a great for chip. I mean, I, 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 it makes sense that Apple would pick the cream and would, would start at the top. So I don't think you'll see a seller on. I think Apple would be foolish to do that. Uh, that's that's something in the, unless they're trying to do something for the, for the very price sensitive PC market. But even then, I think what they're selling here is performance and performance is remarkable. What was your biggest disappointment? Obviously the rumor mills always swirl before an announcement. What was your biggest disappointment that you didn't see? You know, I wasn't disappointed. Uh, I, I actually was, ex it was more than I expected. What I didn't expect, what nobody said in the rumor, rumor mills is that the PowerBook would be replaced. Um, I'm a big, I'm a PowerBook user. You know, that's, that's really my workhorse machine. And I was very pleased. This is something that Apple has needed for a long time. It's never had a good mobile chip. It's never had very good performance on the, on the notebook lines. So to, so to see their high-end notebook uh, with a really good chip and a very fast bus and PCI Express and all of that, that was exciting. That was very good news. I think that was something I really wanted. Now, another thing they haven't told anybody and we're still waiting to find out is battery life. Mm, and yes. they, the fact that they didn't mention it is not encouraging. You know, you would think, well, if they had better battery life, they'd say something about it. So either they don't, or maybe even they have worse. Yeah, they didn't make a big deal out of the iPod uh, video running full video before when they announced that either. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think that that may that may be a little telling. You know, if you're reading the tea leaves. Yeah, thirty minutes. That's what it's going to be. Thirty, 30 minutes. minutes. Battery life? Yeah, no, it's got to be, be that bad. That. One thing they did say uh, is that they are going to have a very bright screen, brighter than their cinema display, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is a big power. Uh, hungry thing. And that's when I thought, oh good, maybe they are saving a lot of juice on these new chips and they can afford to have a really bright display. But then no mention of the battery life. Mm -hmm. uh, that worries me. You, have to you know, see. I'm actually relieved that I didn't jump over those chairs and go buy the Mac because now that I'm starting to hear these things, I'm thinking maybe it isn't a good idea to be the first. Mm -hmm. I still really want one. Yeah, I do too. But, you know, really I think I'm waiting one. for a rev too. It's so much faster. Oh. Anyways, thanks, Leo. My pleasure. Anytime. Well, that's it for uh, from uh, Macworld day one. Um, yeah, Sean's. I think Sean's toast. We're sitting here in crumpler beanbags. Gotta like it, eh? Check this out too. This is a prototype by these guys uh, called the Brazilian Dollar Home. You can put in uh, two cameras, lenses, and a laptop here. An Aussie company. I love crumpler. <laughs> I love them so much because of this chair. Right. Sean loves them, and uh, I guess that's about all you're gonna get out of him today. Um, don't forget, feedback at labrats.tv. We always like to hear from you. 
Um, and um, thanks for downloading, and we'll see you real soon. And Sean will too. <laughs>